Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. Pressure tests and static fires continue at Starbase. However, as far as the FAA is concerned, everything is still shut down. The FAA's investigation into the incidents of April 20th continue, and finally, SpaceX's patience has run out. Before Congress, SpaceX blasted the FAA's policies, demanding that they change and also demanding that they increase their staff in order to accommodate an ever-increasing cadence of new launches. SpaceX also warns that unless these policies do change, the Chinese will definitely beat NASA back to the moon. But the question is, is the FAA really dragging their heels? Is this a case of inefficient government bureaucracy or a case of prudent policymaking on the part of an agency trying to make sure that everybody stays safe? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon. Once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. So uh, the whole love affair or honeymoon or whatever you want to call it between SpaceX and the FAA is obviously over. There was a long period of time where SpaceX really didn't make any public statements about the FAA, and really there was no reason for them to. The FAA generally was extremely cooperative with SpaceX, in spite of everything that may have happened in the past, in spite of all the rumors of delays being caused by the FAA, the fact that the current administration may be trying to trip up Starship, trying to stop it because they don't like Elon Musk, in In spite of all of those rumors, really the FAA kind of went out of their way to trying to make Starship a viable thing and to make testing Starship a relatively quick and efficient thing. And if you don't believe me, well, you just need to look at the PEA. The fact that the FAA allowed a PEA to be filed as opposed to a full-fledged environmental study, that alone indicates that they were willing to significantly bend the rules. Because after all, the original environmental assessment for Boca Chica was for a couple of Falcon Heavy launches at most a year, not the launch of the biggest rocket in human history, something several times more powerful than Falcon Heavy. It could be argued that a new environmental study would be needed, especially considering how close the Starbase facilities are to a variety of different protected wildlife refuges. But the FAA didn't do that. And a PEA was all they regarded as being necessary, and they made all kinds of assurances in that PEA. However, what happened on April 20th really changed everything, and now the FAA seemed to be dragging their heels and really going through a lot of procedure, a lot of dotting I's, crossing T's, red tape, whatever you want to call it, a lot of bureaucratic details to be taken care of before they're going to let this rocket launch again. And so that, combined with what's going on with the Fish and Wildlife Service, led SpaceX to finally start complaining about all of this. And they did so in front of Congress. But really, does SpaceX have a legitimate case? We are undertaking a campaign that requires many early test flights to rapidly mature and prove out the critical systems needed to safely land NASA astronauts on the lunar surface. We understand the vital importance of this national mission and the absolute need to protect the public during every phase of development. Starship has been ready for its next flight test for more than a month, but we are waiting for an FAA license and accompanying interagency review. This has been the ongoing story, both inside and outside of Congress, over the last several days. SpaceX is not happy about the FAA's pacing when it comes to granting another launch license. As far as they're concerned, they have completed everything that the FAA has asked them to do, and it's time to grant them another launch license. In an interview with Ars Technica, a senior SpaceX official had this to say, quote, licensing at this point for Star 
scholarship is a critical path item for the Artemis program and for our execution. Certainly looking forward into next year, we really need to operate that program at a higher cadence of flights, six to eight month turns. That's not great for the program. And nobody is more aware of these problems than SpaceX Vice President of Build and Flight Reliability, Bill Gerstenmeier, who, by the way, for many years was the Vice President of Human Exploration and Operations over at NASA. So there really aren't too many people who are more well qualified to talk about this. And he had this to say, quote, we've entered an inflection point with incredible innovation in commercial space launch. The criticality is especially true in the face of strategic competition from state actors like China. SpaceX is under contract with NASA to use Starship to land American astronauts on the moon before China does. And by the way, SpaceX wasn't alone in this gangbang against FDFAA in front of Congress. Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic were also engaged. Phil Joyce, the Blue Origin Senior Vice President of New Shepard, said that the FAA is struggling to keep pace with the industry and needs more funding to deal with the increase in launches. And likewise, industry expert Karen Shenawark, who was a former leader at SpaceX and Relativity Space, said that the FAA's recent changes have yet to streamline licensing reviews and have instead proven more cumbersome and costly. And Gersten Meyer didn't let up during his testimony. Quote, It's a shame when our hardware is ready to fly and we're not able to fly because of regulations or review. Licensing, including environmental review, often takes longer than rocket development. This should never happen, and it's only getting worse. He also claimed that the regulatory delays have nothing to do with public safety. And finally, he had this to say about the current race to the moon. These delays may seem small in the big scheme of things, but delays in each and every test flight adds up, and eventually we will lose our lead and we will see China land on the moon before we do. However, not everybody agrees with this assessment. A recent article in Medium put out by Will Lockett, a spaceflight journalist, a pretty famous one actually, had a number of things to point out. First of all, Starship may not be 100% ready to go, as Gersten Meyer suggests. Recently, when they were trying to stack Booster 9 and S-25, they ran into some problems before they could carry out a wet dress rehearsal. The quick release arm was never actually connected to the orbiter during this process and eventually S-25 had to be unstacked and they analyzed the hot staging ring, a recent addition to Booster 9 that will allow Starship to carry heavier payloads into orbit before the ship was finally restacked. Which means as of the 17th of this month, Starship actually wasn't ready to go as Gersten Meyer suggests. Lockett goes on to point out that the launch that took place on April 20th was hardly typical, and the six to eight month delay was definitely warranted given the fact that SpaceX attempted to take off without a proper launch pad, without any protection for the pad whatsoever, which led to huge amounts of concrete being scattered across the terrain, and also a substantial amount of concrete getting chucked into the Gulf of Mexico. Lockett points out that, quote, needless to say, this premature launch was always going to be a massive health and safety environmental and operative risk. It should never have happened, and both the FAA and SpaceX should never have let the launch go ahead. As such, this push to streamline regulations, in other words, the efforts that are being made in Congress right now, is a desperate bid to allow SpaceX to get away with such careless operations. In their eyes, this damage and fallout are justified, and the FAA revoking their launch license is what is getting in the way of their development, not their pointlessly rushed development. So why did SpaceX launch prematurely? Why didn't Musk wait a few months until the launch launch pad was ready. 
Well, at first, at least as far as Lockett is concerned, he thought it had something to do with National Weed Day on April 20th. However, he rethought his stance given recent developments. According to Lockett, quote, developing and building a launch vehicle like Starship costs a pretty penny, and Musk hasn't done it with his money. Over the past few years, SpaceX has raised literally billions of dollars in private funding to get Starship off the ground and into commercial operations. It also has multi-billion dollar contract deals with NASA for several lunar Artemis missions and private satellite launches. Musk is famous for over-promising and underperforming. Back in 2018, he claimed that Starship would be launching in late 2019. As such, Musk has a horde of backers who have sunk hundreds of millions of dollars into his mega rocket only to see it get delayed repeatedly. For it to meet these launch contracts and start paying out on these investments, Starship really should have been doing multiple orbital tests by the middle of this year. As such, Starship is massively behind schedule. It is now my opinion that this pressure is what made SpaceX and Musk approve such a premature, risky, and nonsensical launch. The payoff is that if the launch went well, his backers and launch contractors would be happy. That is worth the risk as it would enable them to take a giant leap towards commercial operations. However, while I think SpaceX knew that there was a good chance the pad wouldn't survive, I also think they massively underestimated the potential health and safety and environmental fallout it would cause. In fact, I don't think they even properly investigated the potential risks at stake here at all. So rather than put their hands up and go, we made a mistake, we should have waited for the pad to be ready and slightly delayed our plan launches, instead, they are pointing the finger at the FAA, making it seem like the red tape of this industry is in the way of its development, not their reckless approach. Even though it isn't certain that SpaceX has done everything the FAA requested them to do in order to gain a launch license, when dealing with this much potentially damaging power at such a vast scale, you should not be trying to streamline regulations just because you can't hit the deadlines you gave your investors and contractors. That is a path to potentially catastrophic events. Now, one critical thing that undermines Lockett's credibility as far as I'm concerned is his obvious hatred of Elon Musk. The final paragraph points that out. Quote, for me, this stinks of Musk. His constant bullshit around Tesla's technology and self-driving capability just to further increase its stock price, etc., etc. However, that being the case, I think he does make a couple of very important points. In my opinion, that rocket should never have taken off on April 20th. They should, at the very least, have tested the water deluge system and that water cool plate before even trying to launch the world's most powerful rocket on a pad that had been treated with some heat-resistant material, and that's about it, anybody would have realized that was going to cause a tremendous amount of damage and debris. And many people, including myself, and I have no engineering experience compared to Gersten Meyer, well, what we predicted would happen did indeed happen. We are very fortunate that that rocket did not blow up on the pad with a cataclysmic explosion that might very well have endangered the lives of people at Starbase or even people watching at South Padre Island. I think it's also legitimate to assume that SpaceX is under a tremendous amount of pressure right now, especially from NASA, and that pressure is being felt by former NASA employees in a big way. Maybe not Gersten Meyer so much, but Kathy Leaders was largely responsible for the decision that made Starship NASA's choice for a human landing system on the moon in the first place. Her reputation is very much at stake right now, and any delays with Lunar Starship is going to reflect very poorly on her legacy. And I'm pretty certain that this is something that's having a big impact on the opinions and views of her colleague and friend, Bill Gerstenmeier. That having been said, though, I don't think that any intentional effort is being made right now to try to deregulate the FAA or to remove any critical safeguards that are there for the safety of the public. 
After all, the FAA is woefully understaffed given the increasing cadence of launches that are taking place with a lot of launch providers, not just SpaceX, which of course is one of the reasons that Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin were present in this hearing as well. So I do believe that Gersten Meyer's assessment of the FAA is valid. I do believe that lots of changes do need to be made at the agency in order to accommodate the ever-increasing increasing number of launch providers and the increasing launch cadence that NASA and others are going to have to be facing here in the very near future, especially at places like Cape Canaveral. That being said, however, I don't think that we should be looking at this six-month, at least currently, delay that's existed at Boca Chica as being a typical example of how the FAA does business. Indeed, six to eight months should be the minimum amount of time that should pass after the fiasco that took place on April 20th. As I continue to say, we are very, very fortunate that things didn't go a lot more sideways during that long launch than they actually did. The malfunction of fl the flight termination system alone theoretically could have put spectators in a whole lot of danger. Fortunately, that didn't happen, but there's no guarantee that it won't happen again until we really have a thorough opportunity to analyze SpaceX's new rocket, the solutions they put into place to make absolutely certain that something like this isn't going to happen again. Starbase is way too close to heavily populated areas to be taking reckless chances like the one that was taken on April 20th. Yes, I'm being harsh, but I'm also somebody that wants to see Starship succeed. NASA has painted themselves in a corner in a very big way by going with this solution. Starship is an immensely complicated and untested architecture for getting to the moon. It's going to take a lot of testing, a lot of successful testing, to get us to the moon anywhere close to 2026. I would say 2028 is the earliest that we can aspire to get back to the moon using Starship. And because NASA foolishly skipped over a much more straightforward and simple architecture with Alpaca, we don't have an alternative. And by the way, it's also worth noting that the Fish and Wildlife Service really are probably the agency that are holding things up at present. A team of their experts were only recently spotted close to the launch pad surveying the ground, really not sure what they've been up to, but if they have a look at how much disruption Starship has created for the local wildlife in the area, well, they could end up holding up this process a lot longer than the FAA does. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but it very well might. In the meantime, I definitely feel that the FAA needs to make some changes and needs to be accommodating to SpaceX in order to facilitate Artemis 3, if nothing else. But that being said, the FAA's first priority should be the safety of the public and getting SpaceX off the ground quickly and expeditiously should always come in a distant second. I'd like to thank John Depker, Greg Inman, and Sean McGlynn. Thank you so much for supporting this channel on Patreon, and if you'd like to join them and our growing community of supporters on Discord, well, all the details are in the description, and also thank you very much for Lab Padre's donations of incredible footage to this video. You've been an awesome partner for a long time, and everybody should consider supporting them as well. Hey, Future Angry here. Just wanted to let you know that I received the following statement directly from the FAA's press office. Quote, Keeping pace with industry demand is a priority and is important for several reasons, including meeting our national security and civil exploration needs. We're working diligently to attract, hire, and retain additional staff, unquote. By the way, Stephen Culm at the press office for the FAA keeps me well informed these days, so I'll let you know if there are any further developments. Please like, please subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.